Lipscomb, joined by TJ Brown and Rich Harris. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with Kyler Kelly of Oregon State University. As a senior for the Beavers, Kyler averaged 11.1 points per game, 5.3 rebounds per game, and of course 3.5 blocks per game. He's a two-time all-defensive team selection in the Pac-12 and has set records in Corvallis, including career blocks, single season blocks, blocks in a game, and consecutive games with multiple block shots. Thanks for joining us today, Kyler. We really appreciate your time. Oh, thank you. Yeah, ha happy to have you. So basically, we're just going to alternate questions at you. Um, I'm going to start off with the first one. Um, what I was curious about is kind of your development strategy as you now transition from college to the professional ranks. Do you feel it's more important to kind of double down on your current profile as just a super efficient scorer around the basket, rim runner, and, and rim protector, obviously, or is it a little bit more important to kind of work on the weaknesses? How do you, how do you approach that? Um, so what I've been told is uh, definitely work on your weaknesses, um, but make your strengths the, the biggest part of your game. Right. Uh, so getting faster and uh, stronger to be able to run the floor uh, uh, with ease. Um, and just keying on the details uh, that you might need to, to tweak a little bit um, on defense and offense, uh, definitely making my strengths even stronger. No, that makes so a little bit of both, honestly. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I think TJ's got one for you now. Yeah, I'll go next. Thank you again, Kyler, for joining us. Uh, my first question is, or for you to talk about how your game has developed since your days at Northwest Christian University, as well as Lane Community College. And also, are there parts of your game you think you weren't able to explore as much while you were at Oregon State? Um, I was still growing into my body at Northwest Christian. Uh, wasn't, hadn't really done the, any lifting, really. Um, I, did, I did in high school, but not really as serious until I got to Oregon State. And so um, body wasn't really where it needed to be. And when I got to Oregon State, uh, uh, I got more athletic, got bigger and stronger. And um, as to my game, uh, there were, I feel like there are a few things. Uh, the ability to shoot mid-range, um, I uh, feel like I showed that a little bit towards the end of the season. Um, but yeah, definitely just my getting my body right was probably the biggest thing um, from Northwest Christian to Oregon State. Yeah, for sure. The physicality of the game is definitely different at Oregon State, that, that level of competition. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow up with one thing TJ said. And, and uh, is there any parts of your game that you think um, that we, that we as, a, you know, as general fans um, don't really know about your game, that uh, an underrated aspect of your game that you haven't been able to show? I think so. Um, it'd probably be uh, a little of the post work. Um, I didn't really use use my post moves to my advantage, my quickness to my advantage, uh, getting around the bigger, stronger guys. It might be a little bit slow footed. Uh, I didn't really use my quickness to my advantage. Yeah, yeah I, I think towards the end of, of the, especially your senior year, you started to see like you were a little more comfortable. Like you'd even put the ball on the ground for a dribble or two in the lane at times or, or kind of show that face up jumper. Um, so those were the parts of your game that I thought started to kind of shine through um, later in the season, at least. Definitely. All right. So, Kyler, one thing I wanted to ask you about, can you talk a little bit about kind of your intuitive timing when it comes to shot blocking? You know, um, you're, you're and, and also kind of an underrated thing that I think that you do is you block shots with both hands a lot. You know, a lot of people will primarily block shots with their dominant hand. Um, and maybe you do that more, but you certainly use both a lot of times. And um, can you speak a little bit? Has, has the timing just always been natural for you? Is that something you someone taught you, you worked on? How did that all work out? Yeah, I mean, I didn't really, I haven't really worked on shot block. I feel like it just just came to me. Uh, just my, what really gets the, gets the crowd going to get a nice, nice big block. Uh, uh, as for blocking with both hands, I, I really just, try and block the ball with which, whichever hand is closer um, to protect the rim. And there's, there's some times where I get caught up uh, crossing my body with, uh, with one of my hands and then getting a foul. Um, 
obviously just uh, watching film on players that finish around the basket, driving the lane, finish around the ba- finish around the basket. Excuse me, and how they finish. But they're gonna double pump, double clutch, or uh, uh, or a little reverse. That's who I pretty much uh, gauge that. So a lot of it's natural, but there is a little bit of like picking up tendencies of certain guys you might be guarding as well. Yeah. Yeah, along those same lines in terms of your blocking ability, it's pretty amazing how you block so many shots without fouling. You only average about two fouls per game, and that's pretty amazing that you have you average more blocks than you do fouls, especially for a shot blocking rim protector. So, is there a trick for you not to foul, or when you challenge when someone challenges you at the rim, is there a trick to how you avoid getting picking up personal fouls? I think to that question, I think uh, just my length, uh, just how long my arms are, just how far how far it is away from my body um and then just the timing the timing of it and just uh just going after the ball not 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 hitting the body do you, do you realize kyle you were fourth on your own team in fouls there were three guys ahead of you <laughs> that's pretty amazing right there um my next question is is about your shooting um when you watch you uh shoot mid-range jumpers the form looks good from the free throw line it looks really good um, from 17 feet and in, you shot close to 40%. And from the free throw line, you shot close to 70%. So my question is, and you probably hear this a lot, how confident are you in your three-point shoot? Because you only, I should add, that you only attempted one while at Oregon State. Yeah, I think the one was, uh, we were down in Texas, and I don't, I don't think it was, they gave me one. I didn't shoot it, though. I don't know, I don't know what it was. <laughs> uh, I mean... I was uh, shooting threes. Um, like I, I would work on my threes before I got to Oregon State, um, but that's not what they needed me to do. And so um, uh, I, I stuck to my role and uh, as a as a rim protector and floor runner, and uh, that's all I needed to do. But I mean, do you so you do feel like you know when you get to the next level, you're going to be able to to knock some down. You're confident in that. Uh, is it, it's all with consistency. If I keep if I keep working on it, uh, yes, that's what that's like. What uh, like the first part of the part of the interview? You guys are asking uh, uh, what uh, what are really my strengths, and I mean it's not a big strength that I try and work on that I want to make better, um, but it is something that might need to be looked at because the game is uh, evolving towards bigs that can stretch the floor out, and so. Right. Make, makes sense. Well, and, and, and as Rich kind of alluded to, your, your free throw percentage did improve, uh, you know, by a pretty significant percentage from your from your junior to senior year. So I imagine that was a lot of summer work. Yeah, a lot of summer work uh, with Coach Rupp and uh, all the other coaches, Coach Thompson, Coach Tinkle. Um, but then it was just confidence, too. Uh, last right. my year was my uh, first year at Division One, and um, so I just got more confident as the season went on and then as the summer went on and then so on. Makes a lot of sense. Um, I was going to ask you, and, you know, I'm sure this is obviously, like, obviously you want to play at the highest level possible, of course, and I actually think that you're a little bit underrated right now when it, terms to, when it comes to kind of the draft consensus and, and being talked about. I, I think your, your profile of players is, is very valuable in the NBA right now as a rim protector. Have you heard from many teams yet? And, and where are you in regards to, like, G League versus overseas or NBA right away. How are you just kind of, I guess, to handling all that? Uh, I've, been, uh, I've talked to a few teams, uh, just interviews, and uh, I mean, see, so you got the Warrior shirt on, but oh yeah, it was. I got this, I got this a long time ago. It was, <laughs> um, but yeah, I talked to a few teams, and uh, they they told me uh, straight up, um, uh, just keep working. You never know when you're when you're going to be called. Um, for me. Uh, I feel like my drive for the game, my love for the game really just drives me to work harder uh, and do whatever I do and to take whatever route I need to get to where I want to be is uh, my mindset. That's awesome. Well, and you've, you've, we've seen a lot of successes from, you know, if, you know, however it breaks down, if you have to start in the G League or whatever, making your way to yeah. the NBA is, is, is fairly common these days. So, yeah, th- thanks for expanding on that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and also, can you describe the type of professional team you'd want to play for? So, in terms of play style, uh, in terms of schemes, can you do you have a preference? Uh, not so much as a preference. Uh, from what I've been seeing from a lot of teams, is a lot of pick and roll use. Um, 
And I feel like that's uh, the game right now, pick and roll. Uh, if it's not there, swing to the corner, the open man uh, for the three. That's what that's what pretty, pretty much been seeing uh, this past couple of years. Can you also, in terms of defensively, like what sort of team would you want to uh, have, uh, would you want to be a part of in terms of what your role to be as a, as a rim protector? Uh, for me, I mean, whatever team uh, takes the most pride in defense because, I mean, defense wins championships. And uh, for me as a defensive, a strong defensive player, um, I feel like that uh, a big defensive team would be the best fit. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. Tyler, I'm gonna wrap this up with a fun question. <laughs> um, I don't know if you're aware of this, you're probably not, but in a lot of games that you're, n that you're not playing in, Bill Walton mentions your name on the air. Are you aware <laughs> of this? <laughs> uh, uh, my mom has uh, watched a few of the games that he's, that he's done, so uh, she's, been, she's always like, holy oh, Bill Walton uh, said this about you while you, while you were just, uh, <laughs> Relaxing, I'm like, oh, well, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, uh, it seems like at least 50% uh, of the people who live on the West Coast have stayed at his house at one time or another. Have you ever had that opportunity? Uh, no, 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 not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, I mean, um, I know he likes to talk to the players before the games. Uh, just has he given you tips and so forth? By the way, oh, yeah, you rank higher in, in NCAA history. You rank higher than Bill in block percentage. <laughs> um, yeah, so the first time I met uh, Bill Walton was, uh, it was my first Civil War down in Eugene in my junior year, and he, he was, he was trying to ask me a whole bunch of questions, because this kid, this tall, skinny kid coming out of Jervis, Oregon, whoever uh, that is, um, he was asking a bunch of questions uh, from my mom's neck, so he to know me, uh, which is, uh, it was really cool to talk to him. Thank you both. Thanks yeah, so thank much. you so much oh, for the time, you. Kyler. Really appreciate it, man. Oh, thank you.